Uh, David Rosen, you are the interfaith advisor to the Chief Rabbinate of Israel. Welcome to WPC TV. You've just been part of a panel discussing politics and religions with an S on the end. I think an ordinary person might say that religion can be a terribly bad thing and that it brings a lot of conflict with it. I don't think they're necessarily wrong, most lamentably, because I think everything good can be prostituted. Uh, no, because uh, a chef burns a toast doesn't mean that he can't necessarily produce cordon bleu. So everything can be uh, used in a destructive way. And my point especially was that religions that relate to people's identities and sense of belonging, when they are alienated or feel threatened, then it's used both not as a crutch but also as a means for self-righteousness and even to demonize others. So certainly terrible things have been done in the name of religion, even though most so-called religious conflicts are nothing of the sort. These are territorial conflicts conflicts in which aspects of identity are used. But the solution isn't therefore to say because religion is abused, therefore ignore it. That's only going to make the situation worse and you're only going to play into the hands of extremists. If you don't want religion to be part of the problem, you've got to make it part of the solution. And you need to engage the mainstream moderate voices so that these are empowered and that therefore you minimalize the impact of the extremists. You have to protect yourself, but it's not enough to be purely defensive. You have to be proactive. You're living in Jerusalem, you know, the home of three faiths. And you made, I thought, a couple of very interesting points. One was that um, you criticized the lack of the best leaders among the, the Christians and the Muslims. Um, doubtless they might contest that. Uh, but the second point I thought was very interesting. You said that in your interfaith group there, politicians have never come to see you. Kerry hasn't come to see you, uh, Hillary Clinton didn't come to see you, and so on. Why not? Well, first of all, let me correct your first point. My criticism was not of the Christian leaders. In fact, I said they're probably better than the Jewish and the Muslim leaders. My, Christ my criticism of the Jewish and Muslim leaders is due to the fact that religion is not autonomous in our part of the world, and it's not unique in the world in that regard. In other words, it's subject to political authority. My point, however, was that because it's not prophetic in the sense of challenging the politicians, doesn't mean that it's irrelevant. It still represents the identities of the people and should be engaged by political leaders who want to find a, a, a way forward in terms of resolving the conflict. And that's the strange thing, that they have ignored that altogether. And part of the reason is precisely what we were talking about before, I think, that as religion is often exploited destructively, they think, therefore, that the intelligent thing would be to avoid it. And it's totally counterproductive. It's counter to their own interests. There also may be another factor born out of the American paradoxical preoccupation of the separation of church and state, even though it's one of the most religious societies in the Western world. Final point, then. Do you think you can change that? Do you think you can involve the politicians? I certainly think it's possible, and I uh, think we've seen the American administration make appointees of people who are meant to do that. The danger is that they appoint them as the parish, as the church in the corner, and don't engage them in terms of their mainstream. And I think if enough people make the point I'm making, eventually the penny will drop. Well, inshallah, as Muslims would say, good luck to you, and thank you very much, David Rosen, for coming. Thank, thank you. you.